second page, the, the end of it dated like 1800, and it was from Europe, from a school in Europe in the 1800s. <laughs> okay, so that was even as you it's just human nature. People don't even even in Europe, people didn't see each other a whole week, and it was a big social. Well, they're even more oh, so here. We, we finished we, by Uval of Sion. Uval of Sion, page one twelve. Yeah, yeah, you were. Yeah, we finished page one twelve. But no, we we're up to one twelve. Up to one twelve. Yeah, but you said we finished it. No, 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 we're up to it. We, we did Ashray. We did Lamatseya. We're up to a That's it. No. Here's George. Oh, we learned in Kaddish. Very good. This this wine is excellent. Susie, I'll get it. Bernie's here. Jerry. Bernie and Jerry. Carol's in the team. The way you were going to say, I didn't know. I didn't know. Did you see that? Something was closed down. The airport was closed down. So I don't know if these guys were affected. What happened? Carol and Sydney Teichman yeah. and yeah. Sherman's, yeah. they went on a cruise to New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. But there was a major story. It was in the newspaper. Auckland was shut down. They, they couldn't. So I don't know whether they had left. Because Bernie, in my Dafion. There are two islands, the North Island and the South Island. They could be anywhere. Listen, in my Dafion. Send it to me, by the way, around camera. I had Bernie and Alex Pacifico. Both of them Zichron and Madracha, correct? correct? Okay, they, you know. they went on it because it was being taped. Doesn't mean as Bernie was in us. I remember Bernie, an hour was on that room off the coast of Australia. They were in the boat for two weeks. They were in the boat for two weeks. They couldn't get out of that rooms. Yes, I remember. They were locked in. And I hope they didn't have yesterday at nine o'clock or dropped off. And they kept on the My master from, um, well, now they live in the safe, but they used to, the rabbi from Boston. Anyway, uh, they were supposed to uh, take a flight at 11. They dropped off at 9. Then the flight was delayed, the flight was delayed, and then there was a mechanical problem, and then this and then that. And they ended up staying there. Oh, and he's in a wheelchair now. So, which airport? Here, LAX. We are on. Page 112, volume 12. Hi. Hi, Kenny. Um, volume is, uh, excuse me. We did Ashray. We're doing the end of Davening. We went through, of course, Birchas Hashachar, Psuki de Zimra, Birchas Kriyashma, Mona Ashray, the Shat, the um, Tachanun, we learned Kriya Satora. Sorry about that. Now we move to the conclusion of Davening, <clears throat> which includes Ashrei and Lamnatzech. And now we're up to Uvalad Sion. Is somebody here, Susie? Sue, somebody here? Oh, Jacob. Okay. After Ashrei and Lamnatzech, Uvalad Sion is recited. And in the Valet Sion contains the line of Kedusha, <clears throat> including Kadosh Kadosh, which is from Yeshayahu 6.3, and Bar Kvod, Arashemim Komo, which is from Yechezkel 3.1. This Kedusha is recited while seated and is called Kedusha de Sidra in Aramaic. The Gmorn Sota tells us that on a spiritual level, this special Kedusha helps to preserve the world following the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. Rav Shemar Gabriel Oim Rav Shemar Rav Yoshua. Biyom Shachar Beis HaMikdash, there is no day that didn't have a curse. Amar Rava, v'chol yom v'yom merubah kilosu mishal chaveru. 
every day is actually more cursed than the previous way. So it gets worse and worse as time goes on. In the morning, people will say, I wish it was last night. And then that night, people say, I wish it was this morning. It means it gets worse and worse. Hey, Boke. Now, what more? Are we talking about tomorrow's Boke? No. It's the, it's the previous morning. So, and then if each time we keep on saying it, the previous time, I wish it was the previous time, then we see it gets worse and worse every day. If that's the case, if since the time of the Chorben, the days are more and more cursed, how does the world exist? And for the Gemara, this is in Sota, Memtes, Omed Aleph, Akdusha de Sidra, the sitting Kedusha, or the Kedusha that's said in the, in the Seder of the Tefillahs. And Yeheshme Rabba the Agadita. That means the Kaddish de Rabbonon that is recited after you learn Agadita and you say, A Yisrael Val Rabbonon Val That these two, those two Kedushos. Rashi explains further that the Kedusha de Sidra was instituted by Chazal to enable all Jews, both those who are learned and those who are not learned to fulfill the mitzvah of Torah study while simultaneously sanctifying Hashem's name through the recitation of Kedusha. Thus the power of Kedusha de Sidra to maintain the world stems from its inclusion of these two elements, Torah study and Kiddush Hashem. So says Rashi there in explaining what the Gemara meant by a Kedusha de Sidra, Seder Kedusha, Shalot Taknua, Elishu Koisro Oiske Mitor Bechol Yom Davar Moed. Every Jew should be Oisik a little bit in Limon Torah. Shoimer Kriyos of the Targumo. At a minimum, we say Kadosh Kadosh, and we also say it in Aramaic. So, in essence, that's Torah study. We touch what we say. We say it in Hebrew, and then we touch it in Aramaic, and that's Torah study. Ve'en ko'itz kim b'Torah, v'kivan shenoye, b'chol Yisrael b'talmidim uvam me'aretz. This uval etzion is said by both talmidei chachamim and ame aretz. Yesh kan shtayim kedushas Hashem b'talmid haTorah chavivu. It it since it's got both elements. Talmud Torah and Kiddush Hashem, it's beloved. The Chain, similarly, Yehesh Me Rabbi Mavoyrach, Sha'oin in Achar Hagoda, it means Sha'adarshan Doresh Barabim, the whole Shabbos, when the Rav Darshan publicly on Shabbos, Hayin Hagin Kach, they would say this Kaddish and Yehesh Me Rabbi Mavoyrach. Not when he taught halacha, but when he he was teaching agadita, medrash, some kind of agadita. The ayunik botsim kol on lishmoya, that you know everybody gathered to hear. Lefisha ena yom shom halacha. Nobody works on Shabbos. Similarly, there for yesh kan toyer v'kiddush Hashem, they're learning, and then by saying yesh mei rab Hashem's name is great, so that's kiddush Hashem. So based on this Gemara, Shulchanach writes that one must recite Kedusha de Sidra with Kavana. Mitagmina on Kedusha Suval The words of the Uval at least part of them, are translated to Aramaic. And they put this in bold. Sarich li zahir bo ma'od la'omer v'chavana. Has to be said very carefully with Kavana. Okay. We know that the standard Kedusha recited in the Shemona Esra may only be recited during Chazor Sashatz together with the meaning of 10. 
What is the status of Kedusha de Sidra? May it be recited by one praying alone? Let's say you're at home, be chidus. Or does it also require the presence of a minion? The tour brings a machlokas among the Rishonim. Says the tour, Orachai and Simon Kuflan at days. Because of Rav Tzemach, Shein liyachid loimar seder kedusha. So there's a Rishon who learns that a yachid should not say the Valetzion. <clears throat> As in all the Chol Dover should be kedusha in a Pachos Miyut. If he's a Tamil Chacham, he should learn some Agarita. If he's not a Tamil Chacham, but can read Psukim, he should lay the Psukim in Yeshaya, which leads into the Kodesh Kodesh. Aval Seder Kedusha. So regarding to the Uval Sion, the early Nevi'im and the Zikainim were misakim this. And you cannot cross the Gvul to say it by yourself. However, says the tour, Yeshmisha Oimer, even Shem Psukim, Hareu Gekor Betoira, Lemaisa Der Psukim, at worst, so I were on page 113, we learned about the Uval Etzion. Yesh Mishomer Kevin Shem Psukim, Hareu Gekor Betoira, the Yochel Yochel Loimrim, we're debating whether the Uval Etzion has to, you need 10 people to say it, or whether a yachid at home could also say it. So there's a machlokas rishonim. Uvavat sheyomerson benigun, benikudin v'taimun. But you got to read it with trop, like you're reading a pasuk. Keder shatinokas kornof nei rabban. In cheder, that's how they taught the children how to read psukim. Ulamala kosafti. This is the tour writing. B'shem ovi harosh. Right? The Balaturim is Rav Yaakov Balaturim, the son of the Rosh. So he quotes his father, So that's good. <laughs> we have the Rosh who says that a Yochid can say, well, it's. Right. Bernie, Bernie just pointed out that this is the Haftorah of Parshas Yisro, because we have a revelation. Of Sir uh, Sadibros and the revelation of Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh was a similar revelation that that Yeshaya, that's the Haftor we read next week. The Ramor rules in accordance with the opinion that an individual may recite the Kedusha de Sidra. He says it's similar to the Kedusha that we say in the Birchas Kriyashma. Which a yachid can say. What about the kedusha that's translated into Aramaic? Yachid Omer Velo So a yachid can recite it, but two people praying together not. Therefore, Ain La Omer Bakal Rav. So when you recite it with the congregation, you don't recite aloud the Aramaic translation of the Kedusha. According to the Mishnah Bura, I'm reading the footnote 11. The Ramah here means that a group should not recite the Aramaic translation of the Kedusha, the Sidra Psukim together. Therefore, each participant in a minion should recite it quietly alone. The Mishnah Bura explains the reason for this ruling as being that Aramaic should not be used in communal prayer due to Kabbalistic reasons. Of course, we use Aramaic during Kaddish. We're going to see why Kaddish is an exception because we're going to get to the denim of Kaddish soon. Yeah.
Yeah, but, but Bernie, we also say quietly. that we say that quietly. So Bernie was pointing out the Brich Shmei, which is also in Aramaic. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie points out that the Bay on Arachids is sung by the Tzibur. Based on this, um, Aramaic shouldn't be used in communal prayer. We have to we have to look into that. How that minig started. Okay. So. The Mishmur explains that the Ramon Simon 59 allows reciting the Kedush in Birchas Kriyashma without a minyan. Nevertheless, the Mishnabur writes that it's preferable to recite Kedush and Desidra together with the Tzibur. The Mishnabur recommends reciting the Kedush of Birchas Kriyashma together with the Tzibur as well. So the Mishnabur is consistent. Consequently, if the Tzibur recites Kedusha de Sidra. Before one has recited Ashrei Lam Natseach, you should recite it with them and then recite Ashrei Lam Natseach. So if a person is behind and the Tzibor has gotten ahead of him and he's about to say Ashrei, but the Tzibor is already at a Valetzion, you should say Uvalatzion with the Tzibur and then go back and say Ashrei Lam So that's a very practical halacha here. The Ayin Le'el Simen Nutes, look above in Birchas Kriyashma, the Sham Mesi Karamo, the Nispash Daminik Lom Raf that the Birchas Kriyashma, where we also have Kadosh, 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 right? There's a minute that even private people say it. Says the Mishnah, so it's another reason why a person should daven in a minion rather than be yichidus, because technically it's better. He's saying to recite even the kedusha of birchas kriyashma with a minion, not by yourself. He's behind for whatever reason. And the the tzibur is already saying, "Uvalat Zion with Kadosh Kadosh Yeshulo Amrei Mahem." He should recite the kedusha with the people saying, "Uvalat Zion." Vachakach Yom Asher Vlanat Zion. The Gamash Neip Sukim Shikorim Vata Kadosh. You should say "Uvalat Zion" before the Vata Kadosh. I know "Uvalat Zion." Vanizo is Brisi. You should recite those before you say "Asher Vlanat Zion." Look at footnote thirteen. According to Rav Chaim Kanievsky, the same applies if one is already in the middle of reciting Asher Lam Natsayah. Here too, one should stop and recite Kedusha de Sidra with the Tzibor and then return to where he is up to and continue from there. Without reciting Kedusha de Sidra again, you should say it with the Tzibor. However, one who follows the Arizal should never skip any part of the Tfil in cases such as these. Always daven in order. Okay. <clears throat> the Yalkut Yosef writes that if one does not recite it alone, it is better to, if one does recite it alone, it is better to recite it with the trop in order to fulfill all opinions. <speaking in Hebrew> there is a general rule that Dover Shabidusha should only be recited with 10 people. We call Malkam Abdusha Shaim Emso Valtzion Goyal, and the craze that's called Kedusha de Sidra, Mutterly Achilo Imra. He blanketly paskins that it's permitted. Vafilo below Tamiya Mikro. You can read it. Ela Shatova Nochot Shayachid Yomarna in Tamiya Mikro. But if you if you know the trope, you should lay it with trope. Let's say the Chavas Kalapoiskim. Because we saw some of the poiskim said you should do it with the trope. If one is up to a part of davening during which he may not interrupt, such as Psukit Zimra or Birchas Kriyashma, the Minchas Yitzchak, the Dain Weiss, writes that one should not interrupt to recite Kedusha de Sidra. In a after Yesh Lahadeh Bekdushas Yoitzer, Ukdushas Asidra, he says it's important 
to say the Kedushan Birchas Kriyashma and the Nuvotsun with the Tzibur, the Oymer with Tzibur. Vaymer Kola Kal Yachta Kedushas Yoitzer Kodesh Kodesh Kodesh. So, first of all, he tells us that in the morning, it's important for the Tzibur to wake up and say Kodesh Kodesh Kodesh. When, when, when the Baltfila says, so it's just like Kedusha. When you say, uh, the Seber says, Baruch Baruch Hashem. means there has to be responsiveness by the Kihila. It, he's saying the Kahal should say out loud, Kodesh, 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 both in the morning by Birchas Kriyashma and by the Yuval Etzion. The people wait. You shouldn't just run through Valetzion because you're a fast davener and you want to get to the end first. No. You have to wait until the Shliach gives the cue. You should mantinin kol atzibur lashatz v'oymer b'yachad akdusha. It means, let's say a person is behind. He's in Pesuket de Zimra. He's not with the Tzib. Move a Avram. Big Dusha decision you are not feel according to feel. That the Mogen Avram says you should say Dusha decision wherever you are. The Gambazek cause of Amishna Brura. The Chemedoy Mesha Oilam Lo Nagu Kena Ayin Sham. The Mishnah Bura says it should be, you should recite it. Remember, he said, if you hadn't said the Ashrei and Lamatzech, you should recite the Kedusha with the Tzibur, even though he noted that this is not a custom that he sees people doing. So, but if you are in Pesukit Zimra, or in Birchus Kriyashma, where you're not allowed to be mafsik, right? You can be mafsik for Yeshme Rabba, for Kedusha, for certain things, but other things you can't. He says you shouldn't join the Tzibur for that. Should one sit or stand when reciting Kedusha to Sidra? Now, we've all been davening our whole lives. I, I never seen the minig <laughs> where people stand during a Valetzion. But he says the post can disagree. The post can similarly dispute whether the Kedusha during Birchus Kriyashma should be recited while sitting, with many taking the same opinions. The Prima Godim writes, in the name of the Elia Rabba, that one sitting should not stand and one standing should not sit. Says the Prima Godim in the Orachayim, see Elia Rabba that concerning the Kedusha of Valetzion, if one is seated, he should not stand. And if one is standing, he should remain that way. I in Elio Rabba, I say big dusha so val tzirim yoshev yin lamod mom yamod kach you and shab. And you have a nice um, biography of the prima godim. The prima godim is one of the greatest halachas. You can't learn shulchan aruch in depth without the prima godim. Before you know, it's shach taz prima godim. And, and then the Achronim. I mean, and there's a, a he lived in Lvov, so he was uh, he was in the, the Lvov was like the capital of Galicia. You cry today. I mean, yeah. My grandparents were Sukul, which is near Bells. That's Galicia. When we Yaakov and I went to visit Poland, we went to Lezhensk, so we. To, we, we had reservations to visit and it's in Ukraine. We couldn't cross. We didn't have a visa. We were on the border for eight hours. So it's absolutely correct that it, today it's in the Ukraine. But when the Jews lived there, it was considered part of Poland. And it was the, Galiz, the Galicia part of Poland, which was southern Poland. Okay. The Kafachayim writes that Kedusha de Sidra should be specifically recited while seated, which is the Sephardic custom. And the Shevet the Alevi Rav Vosner, who just recently passed away, writes that what can follow either opinion. 
Asher Shal, somebody asked him, whether you should stand. He says, it's not really clear. How can I paskin on something that is so high like Kedush? Meaning not Kabbalistic stuff, but Nigla Halacha. So the Valetzion was also established at a time during the Roman period, other periods, where the Jews were not allowed to daven publicly and they were not allowed to say Kedusha. So they added this Valetzion later and they stuck Kedusha in there. So, because they weren't allowed to say Kedusha publicly. So therefore, they had Kedusha. Vishlima Kedusha shall ches yud brachis ayedeze nira yoser di yesh la'amo v'chein imatam bishvil ha-misachri. So, for two reasons. If the whole purpose is to replace the Kedusha of Shemona Esrei, because it was Xeris HaShemad, so technically we should stand, he says. Number two, if somebody came late to Shul, and missed the Kedusha of Shemona Esra. It's another reason, he says, why somebody might, might should stand during the Valet Zion. However, that's the Rav Menach, the Ramon Mipano. Nira Yoyser, the Meir Bekedusha is Yoyser, the Birchas Yeshiva. That, that was more of a discussion of the Kedusha that we say in the morning, which is recited while sitting. But he says Kedusha Besidra should be recited while standing. And he says that's his meaning. But if a Raisi Mash, but 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 then then I saw Raisi Mashaid Kvoda Mashmos Poski Mashakos of Archa Shulchan, because Archa Shulchan said that it's preferable to sit, the Tovla Sheves. Nagid u mitzvah. Shehetik bedas Torah. Or came to Ovid, Kamara Ovid. So you can act in accordance with either opinion because you're acting properly. I guess our meaning is to sit all these years. Rav Wozner refers to his explanation of Shiboli Aleket. Gorish Ben Aleket, additional reason for this initial condition is Zidra was to compensate for remaining the Kedusha during times in history when reciting Kedusha was outlawed. And the Abu Dram says that Kedusha decision was instituted so those individuals who arrived late to show Ms. Kedusha and Chazar Sashats can still respond to Kedusha at the end of Tefillah. Okay. Baruch HaTorah and Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Aleinu. Right? So we've done Ashrei, Lam Natsayach, Val Tzion, Aleinu. According to Nusha Aleinu is recited after Val Tzion towards the end of the Tefillah. Nusach Sfar and Nusach Eidot HaMizrach recite Aleinu following the Shir Shal Yom and Pip Torres. It's Mamish at the end. Either way, what is the origin of this Tefillah? The Kobo writes that Yoshua bin Nun composed Aleinu upon entering Eretz Yisrael. Following the destruction of the temple, Rav Yoichle ben Zakkai decreed that it should be recited daily. Says the Kolbo, Kolbo was a Rishon, and our, a lot of our texts of our davening is in the Kolbo. Shomati Yoshua tiknu b'sha'a that Aleinu was recited during the capture of Yericho. Within Aleinu, he put his name Hoshea, that he was used. That's what he was called later on, later on they, by the by the Maraglim. Rashi says they added the name of Hashem, the Yud, to his name to give him Koach, so that he shouldn't go along with the Atzas of Maraglim. And it's in backwards order. Ayin, 
Shin, which is Shalosam, Vav Vanach Mekorim, and Hu Elokeinu He. So it's Hoshea backwards. That's what the Kobo says. Rav Chaim Friedlander explains in the Sifse Chaim that Yericho was unable to be conquered in a natural manner. It was a fortified city. It was a center of impure spiritual forces, Ruach Hatuma, that were resistant to natural warfare. The Jewish people were able to capture it only in a miraculous manner after surrounding its wall for seven days, blowing the shofar. When the walls of Yericho fell and the city was captured, Hashem's infinite might became clear to all. To celebrate this achievement, Yoshua Benun composed Alein. There are more rites that due to its high level of holiness and importance, it is customary to recite it while standing. You should say it with intent. The Goyim daven to an, a God that doesn't respond. So you should say, and then wait, and then say, similar to what we do in Hodu, where we say, uh, and the first break in Hodu there, we stop because we say, Eli Lim, Vashem Shemai Masa. We, we do the same same break there that we do here. Say again. No, no. But here they're pausing between between Avodazara and Kedusha. So the Kel Kel Yoshia, that's that. And the Elilim, Hashem Shemayim Asa is the same thing. We, 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 make, we make stops in Vayichal uh, because we wanted Seaboard to, uh, to cite those, those, those psukim. The commentaries offer three reasons for the recitation of Alein. Let's first see the footnote 18. Yoshua was initially called Oshea. Moshe added a yud to his name to signify that Hashem should shield him from the evil plans of the spies. See the Ramban who writes that Moshe already given Yoshua his full name early in his life using his prophetic ability to foresee the future. The commentaries offer three reasons for Alain. The Lavush, remember the Lavush is one of the Achronim 1700, around that time, 1600, 1700, the Mishnah Brewer is always quoting the Lavush. He's one of the later Achronim, that he, like the Elio Rabba and the, and the Lavushim. So the purpose of Alain is to praise Hashem when concluding one's tefillah, similar to a servant who praises his master when leaving him. So Ketam gimel brachos achrona shemit fila. Alein was like the same reason why we recite the last three brachos in Shemona Esrei. Moidim, the Moidim, the Machzor Shchinosel Litzion, Hatov, and Sim Shalom. Shu keevet shekibel pras merabo. We assume during Shemona Esrei that Hashem has answered our prayers. So we've, see, we've received a gift from our master. Therefore, So he praises, we praise our master and go. So the Levush says, he thinks that's the reason for why we say Alein. To praise him, to bow in front of him. Like like a ma- like a servant who bows to his master before he leaves. In Oh, like like, like leaving the king, leaving the king, 
So Bernie says, like stepping backwards by the Shmona Esri, the same concept. So here we do the bowing before we leave the king. The Bach indicates a different reason for Alein is to serve as preparation for the rest of the day. Hatamu to embed in our heart. Before they go home, Yichud Malchus Shamayim. It's an all Malchus Shamayim. It's acceptance of the unity of 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 God, God's kingship. She is Vishi Chazik Bil Vavenu and Munazu, and that we should embed in our hearts the belief. She Yavir Gidulim in Aretz, that the idols will be dispassed from the world. Karoti Karetun, the idols will be cut down, the Takin Olam Shakai, to correct the world with the kingdom of heaven. Ki Az Gam of Even though we're about to go out into the world and do business with our neighbors. Vigilu Lehem. And they're walking around with got, you know, different gachkes and praying to them. Umatslichim. And we also see many of them succeed. We shouldn't succumb to the, uh, the temptation. The temptation to also worship their elilim. If they're successful because they're worshiping, then we should. And prevent that. It's so it embeds into our minds before we got into the business world this concept that Hashem will destroy the elite. The Taz offers a third reason for Elaine, namely that it serves the function of waiting for a short time after Shemona Esrei, which is mentioned in the Mishnah Brachos and Shulchan Aruch. The reason we recite Asher and Sukkot Zimra, because we the, the, the Gemara says we should sit and contemplate an hour before we daven, and we should sit and contemplate an hour after we daven, but we don't have the we don't have the patience for that. So the Asher that we recite is. Fulfills this waiting. After davening, meaning tefillah, referring to Shmona Esrei, they would also spend some time. They should sit. I guess it's an extension of the davening in order for us to stay there longer to fulfill this concept of staying long. In other words, according to the Taz, Elena serves not as the gateway to the other parts of one's day, but rather as an essential part of davening designed to fulfill the directive to wait for a short time before concluding one's feeling. One can suggest that the reasons given for Elena may hinge upon which nusach and order of tefillah is used. The reasons given by the Bach and the Lavush, right? The Bach said to put in our hearts before we go out to work, you know, the fear, you know, the that Hashem is going to destroy the idol worships. And the Lavush said that right before you leave the base Knesset, you should bow before him. So since the Nusach Sfar, the last thing they say is Aleinu. So the Bach and the Lavush fits with Nusach Sfar, in which Aleinu is always the very last section of the Tefillah. Aleinu is thus well suited to serve as the gateway to the rest of the day. On the other hand, the reason of the Taz is more well suited to Nusach Ashkenaz, in which Aleinu forms a central component of the end of Tefillah, but other sections follow afterwards, <clears throat> such as Shir Shal Yom, Ledovit, right? Other chapters to the Ilim, Barchi Nafshi, Ledovit Hashem Ori. Um, it, when you're in a Beis Avel, there's other chapters of Tehillim. 
Rav Herschel Shechter, Nefesh HaRav, develops a somewhat similar theme. Rav Shechter writes that Achronim appear to disagree concerning whether Aleinu represents the conclusion of the tefillah, or it's like a matir, it's a permission to exit the shul. He then notes that the former approach, meaning that it's the conclusion of the tefillah, fits better with Nusach, excuse me. He then notes that the former approach fits better with Nusach Ashkenaz, the latter approach fits better with Nusach Sfard. Means Nusach Sfard, which that's Mamish, the last thing they say. So it's like a matir before they leave the shul. Aleinu representing the conclusion of the tefillah that fits Nusach Ashkenaz. Achen kolzeh shebiarnu ragnicha lefi minek sfarad shoyimri mashir shoyoyim kodim aleinu. It's the last davening. And it works as a, a matir, a, like a permission to leave the shul. They ask us, we say the shir shalim after aleinu. It's part of the end of the davening. Rav Shatzer also explains that the custom in some communities not to recite Aleinu after Mincha when Mariv is recited immediately thereafter is based on the approach that Aleinu represents permission to leave the shul. The Mishnah brings that some large shuls in his time practiced this custom. I don't, we don't see that custom really. Since the participants of the Minyan should not leave until they have recited Mari. There's no reason to recite Aleinu after Mincha. I mean, that's, I mean, Ernie, don't, don't we see that? Mincha to Dolan, that's not an issue. I mean, yes? for example, on, on Shabbos, when we go right into Musaf, or, or Yantif, we go right into Musaf, we don't say Aleinu after Shabbos. We, we say it after Musaf. Couldn't it have come from something like that? Well, Musaf is part of a tefillah too. No, I, but it's a separate tefillah. Yeah, but it, but it's but it, but the is not over until after Musa. No, so so I mean they don't leave the shul. Well, that but isn't that what he's trying to say with the Mincha and Mari? That if you if you back up one to the other, you're not leaving the shul, and and it's a good argument. You're saying that's why they didn't establish an Alain. It, it make it Shabbos. makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. For the same reason that you don't say it after Shachris when you have when there's Musa. Because nobody's going anywhere anyways. Right. Well, but but that doesn't apply only to if you say Mincha Maya right away. Even and so I was gonna say if you said Mincha Gadola at Mincha Gadola, this doesn't make any I mean he says there, I guess there were shuls that said Mincha right before Shkia, like we do during Ezra Van Kok Park. We go right. We go into Mairi after Mincha, but we say Aleinu after Mincha. Right, but he said that only applies where there's no hefsik between Mincha and Mairi. Even if there is a hefsik, if you don't leave the shul, then the same reasoning should apply. Like by us, for example, the rabbi learned between Mincha and Mairi. If the reason you say Aleinu is because you're leaving the shul, even the rabbi does speak and you don't go immediately into Mairi, you still shouldn't say Aleinu using that reasoning because you're not leaving the shul. But you see, but you but you can see that. But there's multiple reasons. That the, the, the Rav Shechter was dealing with the issue based on the reason of of it being a matir. Yeah. There's no reason to say it after mincha. Yeah, I mean, no, I agree. And, and my point is, if that's the reason that you leave the shul, there's no reason to say it, even if there is a hafsaka between mincha and Meir. Because like, nobody's going in, going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you go right into it or not. Maybe the guys who go to the Kiddish club need to say Aleinu before they exit the show. <laughs> That'll stop them from going That's to the great. Kiddish club. <laughs> so here's a, here is here is Sai's thing. This reasoning also explains 
why Elena is not recited on Shabbos after Shachris or on Yom Kippur after Musa for Mincha, as the congregation will not be leaving until later. Now, I, I didn't that's read a ahead. problem. That's a problem a for us because <laughs> we take a break on Yom Kippur and go home. Technically, we should say Elena right. based on this. Well, so the, that's right. We don't say it also at the end of Mincha before Nila. Yeah, Not that's really. a good, Ernie, that's a good idea. Well, the Mincha after Nila works because we're in right. Shul. But we go home. Two in the afternoon, we finish Musaf, then we go home. Musaf, and you go home, you don't say Aleinu. You should say Aleinu. Right. You should take it up with the Tzuba. Again? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, Bernie is saying Rav Shechter didn't leave the Shul. On Yom Kippur, likely, and therefore, that's why they didn't recite Aleinu in between. But those that take a break have to be ma'arer this issue, whether or not it's more appropriate to say Aleinu right when we finish Musaf on Yom Kippur. The Arizal. The Arizal adopts a different Kabbalistic understanding of Aleinu, based upon which one should follow the Nusach Sfarad and Eid of the Mizrach order. According to Arizal, reciting Pita Maktoiris removes the spiritual klipot that accompany the Shefa, physical bounty that Hashem brings to the world in response to our prayers. Aleinu then follows and illuminates the Shefa in a blinding light that prevents the klipos from attaching to the holiness inherent within the shafa. Ve'amevin yovin. The focal point of Alein. What was that? Sounds like a Chabad shir, that's all. A very in-depth Chabad shir, please. Bye. So the focal point of Aleinu is the sentence of Vanach Kori, and we bow. At which point it is customary to bow in acknowledgement of our submission to Hashem. The Piskei Tshuvas mentions two customs as to the extent of this bowing and also explains the origins of the immediately preceding sentence Shehem Ishtachavim Lahevel Varik Umispalalim El El Lo Yoshua they bow, they, they bow down to worthlessness and emptiness and pray to a God that does not save. This sentence, which is mentioned in the Ramo quoted above, is missing. It's missing because the censors removed it. <laughs> Says the Piskei Tshuvas, Nusach Zeshe Mishtachim Lahevel, Hu Nusach Kadmon, it's a very early nusach. Shuhuva b'sidurim ha'ishanim. They're in the very early sidurim. The ramzu bo b'gematria osu ha'ish. There's a, a reference to osu ha'ish because the gematria of the word varik is 316, which equals the gematria of Yeshu. Mm. I'm sure the censors had a very good time with that one. Vigam Shalayishma'ilin. It's also a reference to Muhammad. The El El is 92, which equals the Gematri of Mahmad, the Hebrew name of Muhammad. Uvimirutsos hadoros, as generations went on, hushmat mirova sidur, machmas yire had censoria. So the Hebrew publishers kept it out because they were afraid. Vamedagdikim korim bevircheyem ma'at. They bow their knees a little bit, like when you bow of Shmona Esrei, when you say, Bishashamim vanachdu korim. So korim. Is bowing your knees, bending your knees. Then you put your head down. Then you put your head 
בשם האריזל, שישטח וישטח וגדולו. It should be a big bow. And this, the Yaivitz, Rav Emden, said, Hishtachavo Atzuma. A very great bow. Ba'af l'minig ha'oylam. La'arkin ha'rosh v'aguf na'at. We just sort of bend our head a little bit. Nochum la'ashir ha'guf ha'rosh barakov ha'kishir hishtachavo. Ha'mavu Abraham. You should leave your head in this and your body in this buying position in the, the time frame that the Rabbam gives, Shushir's man shef shalomer haposuk, you have to stay bowed the amount of time it takes you to recite the following posuk. Vayichru apayim ala ritzpo, vayishtach v'lohodus l'ashem ki tov ki lo'olam chazdo. So that, so it, it would make sense to have that posuk written in your sitter because you're gonna, you might as well recite it or think about it or whatever, if that's the shear. There are two sections of the tefillah that one must write, recite together with the tzibor, even if one is not participating in the minion. He already daven, he's learning there. And those are Shema and Alein. In both of these sections, the tzibor attests to its faith in Hashem. So anyone present must demonstrate that they are faithful as well. Each day Yisrael records this halacha and adds that it also applies to those who do not dive in Nusach Ashkenaz but are praying in a Nusach Ashkenaz minion. In this case, they should also recite Alein with the Tzibur. Says the Ishe Yisrael in Ninsen Ves Akdesus B'Shosh HaTzibur Amar Aleinu So Achloi Marimayim, if you happen to find yourself in a shul that is saying Aleinu, you have to say it. Vav Sheinu Nispali Moim the moment we feel be kriyash ma verchosel, or b'psukim dezerim lo yoy mari mayim. Now you can't be mafsik during kriyash ma or p'sukim dezerim for aleinu, but yichra b'shashem. But you should bow when they bow. Haragil li espalu benusach ashkenaz. Shrimi bo aleinu achrei uvalitzion. Those who daven nusach ashkenaz were aleinu said after uvalitzion. That time it palal beisak nesses am espalu benusach svard. And now you're in Israel, or whatever, wherever you are, you're in a different shul that David Zuzot Sfard. Each person should say Aleinu wherever their shul is. So if you're a Sfardi, you, sh you should say Aleinu with the, with the Nasach Ashkenaz right after Valetzion. And if you're an Ashkenazi and you find yourself in a Sfard shul, you should, even for example, you're not reciting the other things the Nusach Svar. But when it comes to Aleinu, that you should participate with the Tzim. Mm -hmm. No, you do say. Bernie is pointing out that the Ishe Yisrael only mentioned Kriyashma, excuse me, Aleinu and Kriyashma. He didn't mention Kedusha. I don't know if you can be medak from the Isha Yisrael anything, really. Isha Yisrael is a contemporary Akron. Why wouldn't you say Kedusha when you walk into a shul? I, I, would, I would assume that the, the din applies as well. The Yaakov Yosef disagrees, arguing that a Sephardic Jew who is praying in the meaning following Nusach Ashkenaz need not stop and recite Aleinu with them after Valetzion. He should recite at the end of his davin, But he should stand with them. In Agenu Lomar Lenin Lushabech Achar Sim Kolat Fila says Rav Yosef. Bachar Kolat Fila Tfila Kvot. At the end of every davin, Ukvayin is Bor Leel Shukasher Tzibu Omar Lenin Shabech Mishtachvim. When they're dot, when they're bowing, Roy Lekol Mishin Inza Vezek Nesh Mishtachvos Mat Betvisrod. Everybody in the shul should bow, even if they're learning. Yachad Matzik Mikol Mokom Ein Zochiv Mikra Din Usfar Diyam Espelim Ashkenazim A Nusach Sfar person. Wanders into an Ashkenazi shul. He doesn't have to say Aleinu. He's finishing his own davening. He's got to say Pito Maktoires. He doesn't have to up, 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 turn over the world. But he should stand. 
Some Ashkenazic authorities agree with this ruling as well. For Sfardim, for those praying with Nusach Sfard, as according to the Ariza, Alena must fall off to people of Taurus. Others hold that even for those who adopt the position of the Yishe Yisrael, that Sfardim, or those using Nusach Sfard, should recite Alena together with the congregation, they should recite it again after people of Taurus due to the consideration of the Ariza. Okay. I'm going to stop here. Um, next week, Shir Shalyom, Pitu Maktoires, what if someone has to leave? Women, and we'll start the Dine Kaddish next week. Any questions? Aros, comments? An observation. Yes, if you look, If you look at Aleinu, the first letter of Aleinu is Ayin, and the last letter in the first stanza is a Dalit, Od. What does that stand? Eight. Eight. Uh, eight. Oh, we are witness. A witness. What happens in the second stanza? Same I'll thing. Aleph and, and Dalit. Why? Yes. Because you need to you need to aid them to witness everything we are saying about Hashem. That's very wow. good. Wow. Okay, that's very good. Wow. George Yashikaya, that was a good one. George, you clearly have some Hasidic blood in you. I told you, you know. I do. My on my mom's side.